How many times have you heard from your patients, or you may have experienced this yourself, you feel like your knee gave out, or you moved the wrong way and your back gave out? Many of these types of reactions are due to joint instability. So what causes joint instability, and how does this fit in with our model of the body with matrix repatterning? Hi, I'm Dr. George Roth. I invite you to join me on a journey of discovery into advanced, science-based, applied anatomy, and a true revolution in healthcare. What I have discovered over the years is that joint instability is often a reaction in the body due to a much deeper layer of injury. And it appears that the body causes a reduction in stability in certain areas in order to prevent additional strain and injury in other, more important areas. I've referred to this principle as the idea of sacrificial joints. Many people are diagnosed with disc degeneration in the case of a low back, um, rotator cuff tears in the shoulder, or ligament tears in the knee, specifically the posterior and anterior cruciate ligaments, for example. However, Matrix repatterning has been able to demonstrate an almost instantaneous restoration of joint stability in all of these areas by detecting a source of the problem often somewhere else in the body that is, causes these areas to restore stability. This concept of instability I have referred to as the articular stability reflex. This is based on a theory that certain injuries are considered threatening to vital structures, namely the spinal cord. Certain injuries appearing in the trunk of the body that can affect the spinal cord, so injuries to the pelvis, injuries to the rib cage, and injuries to the head and neck, potentially have damaging effects on the spinal cord. Therefore, certain other joint structures are allowed to become unstable to reduce the effects of mechanical stress being added to those injuries. But wait a sec, I said the low back is one of the areas that creates a sacrificial effect of instability. And my belief is that that is because the low back actually does not contain the spinal cord. The spinal cord ends in the middle lumbar spine, usually around L2 or 3. The very lower part of the lumbar spine, L4 or 5, actually have no spinal cord. They contain a structure of nerves called the cauda equina, which is much less vulnerable to serious damage that can lead to a life-threatening injury. So low back pain may cause pain, neurological issues, and uh, dysfunction, but rarely does it produce paralysis whereas a spinal cord injury above that level can often result in severe uh, limitation, including paralysis. To help you better understand this information, here's a demonstration from one of our recent seminars. This is a very good question, huge. Through exercise, you can manage a condition. And you still exercise, you still, and you still have to do it on a regular basis, or else you're in trouble. Exactly. So this is the thing with exercise, and I, I, a lot of people who do it, they do what you do what you have to do to survive, right? So this is, this is significant. So exercise will recruit other muscles to take over that role. And if you, if you strengthen them enough, you may be able, this is the whole idea of core stabilization. You know, you've all heard about this. This is very big out there. But the thing is, if you don't do it, on a consistent, regular basis. If you don't do your McKinsey uh, protocols on a regular basis, people know that there's going to be a problem. Okay? So here we are again. We're back in the low back area. And I'm going to, dem to test her, her uh, paraspinal muscles. Okay? So nice and strong. Yeah, she's been working hard. They are unbelievably toned. Like they are so strong. Right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Good. Beautiful. You've done a great job. But uh-oh. Yeah. Uh oh, <laughs> what happened? You didn't exercise down here. <laughs> you were so good. Oh, what happened? Anyways, so you see when I go deep into there, Marianne? Yeah. Yeah, feel that? It's mush. Mush, L4-5, mush, right? Here, she's like 
she, this is like, she's like an Olympic weightlifter up here. And here she's like, you know, the 90 pound weakling. Okay, so the point is, so if I, if I locate this now, so you agree, it's mushy, okay? So, and she is doing her darndest to get the other muscles to work for that. But guess what? The light switch is turned off. Light switch is turned off. Okay? Okay. So, I'm going to do a quick and dirty scan here with you. Okay. Yeah, she's got an issue here on her left side. Okay. Did that show up in the scan when people were... Yesterday. Yesterday. Someone else yeah. found that. See, I'm talking to you about intertester. This is reliability, okay? You guys are going to see this. When you start doing this, this is objective, reproducible, and uh, intertester reliable stuff, okay? And when we, when we do the clinical training, we, we blind, uh, you, you're blinded to what the other practitioner finds with a patient, okay? So you, we really test it out. So you, you develop the confidence because you know what you're finding is real, okay? So she has two big issues here. All right, one in the left pelvis, one thoracolumbar. Very common combination, isn't it? You know, do you think you might have fallen on your hip at one time in your life? I like to roll her blade. She likes to roll her blade. I like to fall. Yeah, okay, like right. And you can, you can feel when I go in there, right? Feel that compared to that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She can feel that left side. She's really injured it. Okay, so we have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the machine. This is why this is so handy. The magnets also uh, help to some extent. I'm going to turn it off, okay? Now I'm going to place it in the thoracal lumbar area. She's dead center with there's a lot of stuff going right across. And I'm going to place the other one on her, I'm putting it actually under her sweater right here, okay? So it's sitting here on her left hip, all right? So I just keep using the sweater to keep it in place. The machine is off, okay? Good tone, good tone, and right here, getting pretty mushy, right? All right, I don't want to get mushy about this, but this is mushy, okay. So the worst spot is right about there, about L4-5, okay? Good, just relax, that's good. Okay, so there you can feel that. You see the movement? I'm going in, right? So now I'm gonna uh, keep, I'm keeping a thumb there. Do you, do, I, do you know why I'm keeping a thumb there? Landmark, and she knows I haven't moved it. Okay, so she knows this is actually something that is, you know, consistent, relatively consistent. Got the machine turned on. So now I'm going back to the exact same spot. Okay, what happened? Oh my. Oh my. That was her words. Not mine. Oh my. Okay, right there. Now I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off. Okay. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Mush. Okay, now, so Marion. You can sit up. So now, going back to what you wanted to say, what do you think now? But I, and, and, but I can see that if yeah. you combine these things, the exercise with the, this kind of work, then you really can create a... And the good news is, if you didn't want to exercise, you wouldn't have to. You could just go for your walks and play tennis and have fun. Yeah. Okay? You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't have to do something to compensate for something that's not working. Once you fix it, you don't have to compensate anymore. You're, you've done your darndest and you've done a great job, but you, now you can see why it's limited. So yeah, but, so, so you're, you're pretty clear now, right? Yes. If you are a prospective patient, which now you obviously will be, that this, this is more, there's more to it and there's more that could be done to prevent it from coming back. Right. right, okay? So it didn't take a lot of convincing. She was pretty clear. Her exercises were doing a great job and they were, okay? She is like a power lifter when it comes to her, her paraspinal muscles, except for where they don't work, where they're turned off, the light switches off. Okay? Make sense? This, I believe, is neuromuscular. It's a reflex so far unidentified. Okay? I call it the ASR. ASR. It's in those notes. So that is the articular stabilization reflex, okay? And I believe it to be something that we have so far not fully identified, something that I, dis I discovered clinically in terms of being able to turn stabilizers on and off by influencing a primary somewhere else in the body, okay? The key muscles so far that we've identified in this, in the knee, it's the medial hamstring, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, the popliteus, all right? for the knee, 
The uh, spinal, uh, the paraspinal muscles in the lower lumbar spine. Uh, third, we have the supraspinatus, which I talked about briefly yesterday for the shoulder. We also uh, believe there is a significant one in the, in the hip and pelvis, which is the uh, um, gluteus minimus medius. Parts of gluteus minimus, parts of gluteus min medius seem to be involved in this. And you'll see in, in inability or instability uh, supporting the body on one leg at a time. You'll feel the tone difference. And the patients can feel the tone difference. And they, they'll notice when they're having trouble stabilizing over their, over their stance leg. As well, you'll see the Trendelenburg kind of gait with these people. You'll immediately be able to correct that. Okay? So those are the main ones we've discovered so far. There may be ones in the wrist and ankle too. We haven't fully clarified, okay? But these are the ways we, I believe the body is protecting itself. This is a, I call it sacrificial joints for a reason. And that is the body is sacrificing something that's less vital to its survival in order to protect something that's more vital. Namely, I would say the core structures like the spinal cord. This is protected at all costs. Instability results in tissue stress which can cause a breakdown of that joint. So where do we see most arthritic changes in the case of functional arthritis? The knees, the low back, the shoulders. These are surgeries that are rampant, okay? Guess what you can do now, you know? If you restore joint stability, imagine what can happen. The reality is we're dealing with things uh, that are, people aren't looking at. They're not understanding that these things are happening for reasons that they're not looking at because they're not looking at the entire, how the body interacts with these areas. And this mechanism, this articular stability reflex is something that no one else has considered before. But you're, you're seeing it. You're able to demonstrate it to yourself and you're able to demonstrate it to your patient, which is very important because they are looking for a solution oriented around the area of symptoms. But in many cases, that area of symptoms is a reaction to something else that the body is recognizing. And when you speak the language of the body, then what you're doing is you're getting information that the body is trying to convey uh, more clearly. All right? So this is the, this is the interface that, that we have here, the opportunity. All right? Okay? That's good. So that means you're going to help a lot more people, aren't you? All right? So this is the basis of understanding the concept of why instability is created in the first place. Using matrix repatterning techniques directed directly to those underlying injuries in the core will actually turn those reflexes back on, like flipping a light switch. And what we have found that this actually involves a neuromuscular response affecting specific stabilizing muscles in each of these areas which is why it appears to actually be able to be turned right back on like a light switch. Joint instability is extremely common, from knees giving out to low backs being uh, aggravated by really innocent movement to throwing a baseball and having a, a shoulder uh, coming out of, out of its socket or a, a shoulder separation. These are common occurrences and something that we can directly affect using matrix repatterning. Currently in North America, there are 600,000 knee surgeries, 600,000 low back surgeries, 300,000 hip surgeries, and 50,000 shoulder surgeries. Surgery is often the last resort that medicine can provide. And unfortunately, the results are not very successful, up to 30% are considered medical failures. And even with surgery, um, pain still recurs and function is still limited. Matrix repatterning provides a gentle and powerful method for restoring joint stability to allow for pain relief and profound healing. In our upcoming videos, we're gonna show you how you can precisely detect the source of these injuries. To make sure you don't miss out on the next video, subscribe now.